to understand why this car is parked on the interstate, let's put this story in reverse. Just before 11 Wednesday night, Scott County deputies say a woman in her 20s just got off work. She was traveling north on I-75 and put her car in cruise control. That's when her car went out of control. When we first talked to her, she was at speeds of 90 to 100 miles an hour. Deputy Jeb Barnes faced with the task of catching up to her. And when he did... I heard a grinding noise and I heard her, her yelling for help. By the time Deputy Barnes got to the vehicle, it was going 10 miles an hour. He chased after it by foot, opened the door, got inside to overtake the vehicle. Sorry again, thank you, thank you. And she just basically said, you saved me. And then I tried to calm her down from there because she was a nervous wreck. Hanging on a rear view mirror, a picture of Jesus. Deputy Barnes says as she was passing exit after exit, she must have been praying. I'd say she was, I would have been. Barnes says he's heard of cars getting stuck in cruise control. This was the first time he's seen it happen. You call yourself a hero in this situation? Nah, I'm just doing my job. Covering the news in Scott County, Adam Yosem, LEX 18 News. The smoke and gun shop in Paris has a little more pink these days, and that might be because of these ladies. My guns and my sewing machines. <laughs> They're part of a shooting club for women called Keeping the Peace. I take it very seriously. I practice at least once a week. Think of it as a modern day book club, minus the books and add the bullets. But the reason behind this group is more than just a pastime. My mother's family, her aunt, and three of her cousins were murdered when she was a child. So I grew up hearing about those murders um, quite often. And Kim grew up knowing that the world wasn't always a friendly place. Most all of the women in the club have a reason for packing heat. I was robbed four years ago at Walmart parking lot. A lot of women call me having already been attacked. A lot of them are in, you know, ex-husband, angry ex-husband type of situations. And that's when Keeping the Peace was born, so that women just like myself who don't know much about shooting guns can know how to protect themselves. I've noticed there's been a surge of women calling me just in the past couple of weeks. Whether it be for preventative education or because of a traumatic event, these women take their firearms very seriously. It's just a girl thing, and girls can do this. Covering the news in Bourbon County, Nikki Burdine. LEX 18 News. We can never know what our last words to a loved one might be. We hope that the last thing we say to them, the last thing we do, would be with love. For Misty and her husband, Ken Powers, that couldn't be more true. He um, told me I was tired and I needed to lay down, so... Tucked me in bed. Ken and Misty moved here to Johnson County in 1994 and chose this location because of the peaceful backyard. He loved the outside. But a few years ago, Ken was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. And this past Monday, Ken was outside when he lost his balance and fell in. And I jumped in the water and tried to pull him out and I couldn't. And finally I had to leave him with his head on the bank and called 911. But Ken was already gone. So she did the only thing she could. When I stood in the water, I just held on to him and I just asked God not to take him. Now Misty is grieving the loss of her husband and best friend, along with their daughter and grandson. And they're making sure that Ken's legacy will be one that will continue to touch lives. He was the most extraordinary man. The most right. kindest heart you'd ever meet. So in lieu of flowers, the family is asking for donations to their food pantry at the First Church of God in Paintsville, something they devoted their lives to, and a final act of compassion by Ken. Covering the news in Johnson County, Nikki Berdime, LEX 18 News. It was a nightmare. That's what, how I would describe it. Not for one, but for ten families. I don't know what I'm going to do. A nightmare that wouldn't end. We didn't know who was in the building, who was out of the building at that time of night. More than 20 people got out, but the fire was too big, too powerful for firefighters to save the 100-year-old building. 
Brick walls toppled, the roof caved in. Flames fought back for more than 10 hours, sending three to the hospital. A baby and a firefighter suffered smoke inhalation. They came and they was beating on the door and it woke me up because I was watching a movie and I fell asleep. Regina Vanover and her cousin lived in two units. He was found by firefighters unconscious. Second and third degree burns on his hands, on his back and on his face. He she barely made it out herself. I went to the bathroom and said going out the front door because I couldn't see. I could hardly breathe and it burnt from my neck to my chest. The survivors gather nearby at Artemis First Baptist Church. From one month old to senior citizens, they've lost everything. We just moved in yesterday. We lost everything. We have nothing to wear. We have nothing to eat. We have nothing. No money, no nothing because our food, everything burnt. They have each other. Tonight, they'll sleep at the church, but no one knows what's next. Covering the news in Knox County, Courtney Fisher, LEX 18 News.